day, hope you're doing well, and welcome to another video from Crad Render. And today we're looking at version 0.41 of our rendering software for Blender, which is going to help you get those rendering times down when you're using the Cycles engine to do animations or stills. And I'm going to show you how to install it, how to get it set up, and also all of the stuff which we've changed since the last time we did a release. So let's check it out. Just want to squeeze in a quick thank you and shout out for M-Wave Australia for being awesome, supplying us all this gear so we can do testing and development. The link to their store is in the description below. First, some eye candy courtesy of James Redmond. We rendered out two of his scenes as a proof test to make sure O4 is ready for release. Did about a thousand frames of each and they came out absolutely mint. So we can confidently say that our software now supports Blender 2.93 plus geometry nodes because that's what's in these scenes. And now I can get on with the rest of the video and show you how you can do the same thing. I'm going to really quickly show you how to download, install, and set up the add-on so you can render with it. Go to our website, hit the download link at the top of the page. You'll go to this page. Sign up if you don't already have an account. If you do, click the link underneath the sign up button. If you're supporting our development fund, you should already have access to 041. If not, try 031, which is free and also pretty good. I'm going to start Blender now so I can install the add-on. So I'm going to start it from the command line, but it really doesn't matter how you start it. Um, that doesn't have any effect on whether you can install the add-on or not. Just start Blender. Once Blender's open, I'm going to go to the top left-hand corner to the Edit menu, and then I'm going to choose Preferences. Then I'm going to go to the Add-ons tab. First, I'm going to find my pre-existing copy of CrowdRender and remove it. It's really a good idea to remove before installing the new one. It just solves a whole bunch of issues, so bear that in mind. Then I'm going to click the install button. I'm going to find in the left where I installed or where I downloaded, sorry, the add-on zip file to. It looks like this, CR041BL280. Click it and then click install. After a few seconds, you should see this and then you just tick enable. So check the checkbox over on the right in the render properties tab. You'll see a start button appear underneath CrowdRender. Click start and you're pretty much ready to go. And if you don't want to have to click start every time, I recommend saving your user preferences. And that's it. It's installed and ready to use. Now I'm going to connect to this other computer that you can see called Ryzen Ninja. I'm going to click its little chain link icon and then click the OK button inside this pop-up box. Then you should see that it says something like connected, syncing, uploading, synced. And that means when it reaches the synced stage, it's synchronized and ready to use. But I'm not going to render the default scene. I want to render something just a little bit, just a teensy bit more interesting. So I'm going to go with the Mike Penn BMW scene. I know it's been done to death, but it's a good scene for just doing demonstration purposes. I'm going to choose Crowd Render from the Render Engine menu dropdown. So this is where you normally select like Cycles or Eevee. We can now select Crowd Render, or at least version 0.30 and above our software. You can go to this menu and select Crowd Render now and then use F12 or the Render Engine controls. Now you can also select all of the render passes since about I think at least 0.31 we've supported pretty much every single render pass there is so you can do that. If you make a change you can press resync that will refresh the blend file on all of your nodes. It's usually a good thing to do if you've changed something. Okay so I'm going to select optics and just use the GPU and we're going to do a render. Now I got caught out when I was doing this little recording because I just installed Blender 2.93 on that Windows machine, the one called Ryzen Ninja, you can see there it says it's rendering and it said it's waiting for the render to start. So I think when you first install Blender it can do something like compiling render kernels and it takes quite a while. So I'm going to redo the render because that took about four minutes and that's not really representative of the speed of the graphics card that's in that PC, which is an RTX 2070 by the way. So we get a much more realistic speed, or render time rather, of around about just over a minute, which is pretty cool. And that's way faster than this MacBook, which I'm actually showing you all this on, would have done it in. Okay, I'm going to select another slot and show you another trick that I think you might like. So I'm going to actually change the size of the render tiles now on the PC from the Mac. So I can actually control that all remotely. So I'm going to enter a size of 100 by 100 pixels and I'm just going to redo the render without changing anything else because I'm going to show you how that even though you know GPU rendering is now better with smaller tiles and cycles, it still actually makes a difference. So I'm just going to do a really quick render and we'll compare the time between the two. So the last one used a tile size of about 16 pixel square and this one which just rendered it in half the time used 100. So this really shows that tile sizes for GPUs still make quite a massive difference in some cases. Now I did do one more render here just to check with a tile size of 150 and it worked out to be just a tiny bit slower. So the optimum is probably somewhere between 150 and 16 pixels square if you're 
wondering about optimizing the mic pan BMW scene. Obviously, it's going to be different for your particular scene, so you're going to have to play around, but experimenting is still, you know, pretty much worth it. And as promised, all the render passes from that render are available in the compositor, so you really can just drop in crowd render into a project. If you've got an existing compositing setup in Blender, you should just be able to open the project, render it using more than one computer, speed up the render time, and then have the compositing all done without having to touch it. Because we've taken great pains and care to make sure that all your render passes are available in the compositor, as they would be if you just use Cycles by itself. So there shouldn't be too much setup that you have to do other than just connecting a computer and getting it to sync. Once you've done that, then yeah, this should work. Next thing I want to show you real quick is that you can use extra computers from our cloud rendering service. So that's a partnership between us and Blender Grid in the Netherlands. And it allows you to use um, servers from Amazon Web Services via the Blender Grid service alongside your own hardware. So I'm going to use that Ryzen Ninja PC with the RTX 2070 card in it alongside four servers from Amazon which each have, I think, they've got an Epic chip in them, which has like 32 threads and they've got like oodles of RAM, like I think probably like north of 60 gigs. So you should be fine for most, but the craziest of scenes that you want to render. Now you might've noticed that I've asked for four nodes, but they haven't turned up yet. And there is a bit of a delay and this delay can be anywhere between three to five minutes, depending on just what's going on in the cloud. So you do have to be prepared to wait a little bit. You know, it's kind of like make a cup of tea and then come back and see if it's finished kind of thing. This is just what to expect when you're starting the service. And then I'm going to connect to each one. Now you can connect to them individually by pressing the chain link icon, or you can press this connect button and it'll just connect to everything. It'll show you a summary screen when you press it. Um, then you just hit OK. Bear in mind though that it will reconnect to other things which are already connected, which occasionally can result in them being disconnected, but you just individually connect to those machines again and normally they just return back to being synced. Now again, I'm not going to use the default cube scene. I want to use this cube swirl scene, which I showed you an animation of in the beginning by James Redmond. All the animations, by the way, in this video were rendered using CrowdRender and 99% of them were rendered using pretty much entirely cloud nodes from our partnership with Blender Grid. So we've been testing this pretty thoroughly. It does work pretty well. Um, you do have to sort of watch it though, because if a node, if you run out of credit, for example, the nodes stop, your render's gonna stop. So you do need to sort of make sure you're actually watching it. Um, we are gonna make that more automated in the future though. So stay tuned for that. So once again, I'm gonna change the render tiles for my Ryzen's RTX 2070 card. And that's pretty much it. Then I'm just gonna do a render and you're going to get to watch this. So when I was using four cloud nodes before, I was getting a render time roughly around 20 seconds, 19 seconds, sometimes 18 seconds a frame. And adding the RTX 2070 to the mix gives me a render time that's kind of roughly around, I think about between 16 and 17 seconds a frame for this first render. Bearing in mind though that this is not really well optimized. So there you go, there you go 16 point something. I then did an animation render and did about 34 frames and got times between sort of 15 to 17 seconds a frame around about there. So that cost me about between 17 and 80 cents in total for those 34 frames. So we're looking at around sort of 2.15 cents a frame. Okay, so I actually finished with this setup now. I don't want to do any more rendering. So obviously I'm going to stop those nodes because they're, they're actually billing me all the time. So I press the stop cloud nodes button and in about sort of 10 seconds after doing that, you'll see that this panel changes to acknowledge it. So wait a second, there you go. Okay, and now I'm no longer being billed and all those nodes are going to disappear. So that's the whole experience. And then we get to look at just a few of the frames that we've rendered. So I just went into Blender and just pressed the view animation button and we can watch back some of the frames that were rendered on computers which are literally across the Pacific Ocean from where I live. I live in Australia and these nodes are in the US somewhere in a data center so I thought that was pretty cool and also the fact that you know my little PC here on my desk can actually join in the fun and help those guys render. Right now I'm going to go through all the release notes and just give you a little bit of commentary on everything that's changed since 032 which was the last version. And I'm going to include changes from both 041 and also 040 because there's actually two versions that have come out since 032. We didn't tell you about 040 because we found this bug that was quite important to fix. So although it's available on our website to download, we're actually now just telling you, hey, you should use 041 really because it fixes quite an important issue that was causing pretty 
annoying things to happen. But anyway, let me just quickly run through all the stuff that we fixed in both versions. Right, let's go through 040 first. So bugs, we did find some issues which we fixed. And one of those was just a bug that would stop rendering from happening came about because we changed things drastically in version 030 and a knock-on effect of that was because we made some big changes we hadn't really sort of worked out all the bugs literally so that fixed one of them which would prevent rendering so that's pretty cool next we also made some pretty big changes to file transfer code so we were experimenting with different socket options and with different methods of transferring data and that resulted in a speed increase but that speed increase wasn't actually turned on and that bug was just turning it back on again because we just made a, a screw up in code, which happens. Auto pack in Blender now doesn't cause crashes, we hope, as much. At least it seems a lot better. Um, that was causing some pretty nasty issues where either a crash or an error would happen when you tried to render if you'd auto pack something and that something wasn't available anymore. New stuff we did. Um, a pretty huge and major reorganization of our code for compliance with the GPL. So if you come here from the article which I wrote about this, about version 041, you'll have a lot more detail about it, but just to keep things short in the video, our add-on wasn't compliant with the GPL. Apologies from yours truly for that. Now it is compliant with the GPL and the changes associated with that, well, you'll find out when you actually look inside the add-on package itself that you download. And that's also been applied retrospectively all the way back to version 0.30. And I will be making further announcements about other changes we will be making because we'll be retiring all of the other versions, all the older versions and not distributing them anymore. So that's gonna be a big change on our website just so we can actually be compliant. The next thing we worked on was making sure that logs are fixed in size, which means they won't just grow indefinitely and keep chomping on more and more disk space, which is pretty good. So you'll hopefully not run out of disk space thanks to us. Next, we have reduced the number of sockets or connections that we make between computers which makes things more reliable because there's just less stuff to break and the last thing for 040 was we managed to get a small but actually concrete and verifiable gain in the speed of transfer between computers when you're uploading and downloading files so that's pretty cool and that wraps up all the changes in 040 which is an improvement on 032 but we recommend you download 041 because it has a couple of pretty important fixes in it. The first was to do with the dependency graph, which we were not aware was updating while we were starting a render. And we kicked off another process which caused a different dependency graph update to start. And apparently two dependency graph updates together inside Blender caused trouble. So we fixed that. But the real big one was this one. So if you check out this image, you'll see that there are missing tiles, which is admittedly not something you want and was quite a serious problem a number of people had reported it to us and to be honest we'd had this issue for a little while and we were trying to figure out what exactly had gone on because we tried some fixes but unfortunately they seemed to work when we were testing it and then we'd release it but then people would say no nope, problem still not fixed we finally found the root cause of all these problems and I've written a, probably a longer explanation for you in the article. So if you've come here from the article, great, you can read that. It's just underneath this video. If not, um, the article is actually backlinked to in the description below if you want the details. But this issue is now fixed. We've rendered 500 frames in a row on a test, which before the fix that we applied would only do about five or 10 frames before this problem would crop up. And those 500 frames finished with that single tile having a, well, sorry, a single frame having a miss missing tile. So we are pretty damn confident that we've completely nailed that issue. And that's why we're recommending 041 over 040 because you will not get missing tiles. And missing tiles suck because you have to re-render them. And if you're not expecting them, if you'd used like our cloud surface, for example, you'd be pretty annoyed with us. And rightly so, um, if you have missing tiles. So there you go, that's 041 recommend you download that it includes all the changes in 040 and that's our new software thank you so much for watching this video and of course if you liked it we would appreciate the usual like share subscribe stuff um, that really does actually help you might think uh, whatever but no no it actually does also we'd really appreciate if you checked out our crowdfunding page we are 100 percent community funded and your generous support helps us keep making this software better so go check it out um, there is some stuff in there that you might want to you know support with a donation thanks guys see ya